you've decluttered and you're feeling amazing about it. Your home is feeling lighter. You're feeling more free. You have more time and energy. You go girl. So now it's time to implement some really quick habits that are going to stop clutter from coming back and also prevent a lot of that mess, that expected mess that happens from everyday life from building up and getting overwhelming. Let's go. Number one is dedicated donation bins. Y'all, this has changed my life. I don't say that lightly. And every single student of mine who's implemented these as well, game changer, I promise you. So think about the times in the day that you are doing chores or moving around your house, hustling and bustling, and you see things that are very clearly clutter or that you know, you no longer want or need. But what happens? They just sit there until you have time to declutter. And that time never seems to magically appear, right? It never seems to happen. So this is where dedicated donation bins really shine because now you have a dedicated spot to put your clutter. You have to understand that our environments influence our actions and having these bins or boxes, they don't have to be fancy and easily accessible and visible spots throughout your home, at least one spot, but I have them in multiple spots, which I'll share in just a second, can be game changing for a lot of different reasons. Number one being it actually reminds you to declutter. So you don't need to set an alarm on your phone. It doesn't have to feel like such drudgery. So I intentionally put our permanent donation bin, permanent for a reason, it doesn't move. It's always there at eye level on a garage shelf in my garage. So it's on an open shelf. I see it every time I go into the garage, every time I get in my car and every time I come home from being somewhere. Again, it's a gentle reminder. It doesn't feel like nagging or pressure to let go. And every time I see it, if I have some time immediately when I get home or if I'm in the garage, I'm like, oh yeah, I should probably schedule some decluttering or just, you know, go around the house and see if I can fill up a bag or, or even a grocery bag filled with five to 10 items. And number two, and I think people don't realize this, is I think a lot of us as human beings, we are like, it's our nature to fill empty spaces. I mean, right, if we're battling clutter to begin with, if you're anything like I was, my home was filled with stuff. I fill, filled, 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 right? I could barely breathe. And so if, if you see an empty bin, it acts as an invitation to be filled, just like an empty space or an empty room or an empty drawer. So it's kind of like your donation bin. It's like, fill me, fill me up, fill me up. <laughs> So we have one in our garage, like I said. We also have one in our laundry room. I swear by this because my kids are now six and almost eight and they're growing so quickly. And so when clothing comes out of the dryer that is a little too tight or a little too short, last time they wore it, I will immediately place it in a really small donation bin. Again, this doesn't have to be fancy. This was a bin I had lying around that I've used for toy storage in the past, clothing storage in the past in my closet, a super versatile bin, or even like an empty Amazon box. Just put something there to place things in. And because donation bins were working so well for me as a gentle reminder to get my decluttering in, I thought, why don't I put these in my kids' bedrooms? So in each of my son's closets, they have a small donation bin. They've seen me use our donation bin at home. They know the one in the garage. They've used it in the past, but I like the idea of having one in their room because it's right near them. And so they don't have to come all the way downstairs and into the garage when they are done with something, whether it's toys, collections, you name it. And so it's right there next to them. They open the closet, they put things in it. I like to just like take a peek in their closet every once in a while, a couple times a month, see if things are in it. And I'm telling you, I'm always surprised. There's always at least two to like 10 things within each of their donation bins. And I think this is such an easy way to help teach them the life skill of being able to recognize when they're ready to let go of something and an easy way to make that happen. And if you're feeling really squirrely and wanna add another donation bin, another option would be to put it in or near your closet. There are so many opportunities when we get dressed in the morning to quickly locate and find things that maybe we haven't worn in the last six months or any time in the season, put it in the small donation bin you've got in your closet or near your dresser. And then when all of these are filled up, my laundry room, my closet, the boys' closets, I will then take them downstairs and put them in our main larger bin. It's like a standard tote size. And that's like our main one that gets filled up. And when that's filled, guess what we do? We take it to the donation center, which leads me to number two. And this is so underestimated and so easy, yet so few people ever do it. And that is to schedule your donations, whether it's a drop off or someone coming to your house or an organization coming to your house, put it on your calendar, put it in your phone, your Gmail calendar, your planner. It doesn't matter wherever you plan your day or your weeks, put it on your calendar and treat it like an appointment that you would not cancel, okay? 95% of people drop the ball. They spend all this time investing in decluttering and bagging and boxing things up, but then all those donations sit in the house or sit in the garage for months at a time. And guess what? If you've got young kids, they are 
bound to open those bags and boxes and start pulling things out of there because why not? So get the clutter out as quickly as possible. Put it in your phone. It takes 10 seconds to pick a day and a time to do your donation drop off. And I promise you, you will thank me later. It feels like such freedom to drop things off or have pickups happen and get it completely out of your house. And guess what? Not only are you going to have less physical clutter, you're going to have less mental clutter because there's no more the projects done. Of course, there's always going to be more clutter to handle, but the current project is done. Number three, I've done this one on and off for the last decade plus. I swear by it. It is so fun. And that is having a swap party. So the idea is you invite friends, family, even neighbors, if you like, people that you want to spend time with. And everyone brings household items, kitchen appliances, decor, clothing, shoes, purses, you name it. And everyone gets together and you get the idea. You trade things. Obviously, you don't want to take things that are going to end up being clutter, but you can trade things and find things that you're going to enjoy. And anything that's left at the end gets donated. So it goes into someone's car and they drop it off on the way home. So easy. And yeah, obviously the party itself is going to take longer than a minute, but just to send the initial group text out to your friends takes like less than a minute. So get the ball rolling. I think you'd be surprised how many people would like be on board with this. And I think it's even more cooler. Is that a word? I I don't know. And another thing you can do to kind of up the ante is if your friends and you put your heads together and think of an organization in town that you'd feel passionate about donating your leftover items to, I think this is super powerful and can kind of shift the intention of the party a little bit. And I think it's really even more exciting to donate to certain charities that a lot of people don't consider. There's obviously the bigger charities we've all heard of, but a lot of local charities nearby. And with these swap parties, ideally you walk away with a lot less clutter. Maybe you have one or two things that you're really excited to enjoy and use. You get to spend time with people you love spending time with. And if you choose an organization you're passionate about supporting, it's like win, 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 win. I mean, I can't think of a better thing. Number four is a one minute reset. I call these one minute to win it. So if you've been following me for a while, you know I swear by daily resets. These are less about managing clutter and more about just keeping up with the expected mess that happens from everyday life. And the reality is whether you've decluttered your home or not, we all have expected mess hotspots. Now, traditionally, these are surface areas, kitchen counters, kitchen tables, entryways, and such. So resetting those spaces one, two, maybe three times a day can be super beneficial. That sometimes though, those resets might take more than a minute. And so one mistake I see people make is they go, oh, you know, to reset the space or tidy up the kitchen, it's going to take me like five minutes, but it's a crazy busy day. I don't have the energy. So instead, what, what, what do we do? We do nothing. So here's what you do. You do the minute to win it. You do a one minute reset and get as much done in a minute as you possibly can. Remember, we can do hard things. We can do anything for a minute, except I can't hold my breath for a minute. I just, I can't do that. Everything else we can do for a minute. <laughs> So if you need to set a timer on your phone, but more often than not, you're going to end up going further than a minute and getting more done than you thought you could. So the idea here is with this minute to win it reset is that these help make resets a daily habit. So if you struggle with even doing a five, six minute reset, then start with one minute and then you'll start to build your time slowly up. We have to master the art of showing up first. So one minute, I promise you, you can do it. And this habit is going to serve you for a lifetime. Number five are clutter audits. One of my favorite things in the world. I swear by these in a great way to reinforce the habit of decluttering without having to make it its own like special event on your calendar. And so the beautiful thing about these clutter audits are they can take as long or as short as you like. Mine often take less than 60 seconds, but sometimes like as short as five or 10 seconds. So here are some examples. Next time you're putting the clean dish away out of the dishwasher before you stack your clean mugs in front of the ones in back. Hold up, take five seconds, maybe a few more, and grab the mugs that are in the back that are chipped, you don't use, they're not your favorite color, you got for free at some event six years ago, and they're just collecting dust. You can get rid of four, five, six mugs in like four, five, six seconds. Why do we need 500 mugs? We really don't. So Let's get rid of a few. Next time you're gonna go clean your bathrooms, which uh, by far my least favorite job in the house, but we gotta do it, right? So next time you're reaching for your cleaning supplies under the sink, I can promise you there are other cleaning supplies in there you haven't used in the last six months or year. A great question to ask yourself is, have I had the opportunity to use this cleaning supplies? Maybe you don't like the smell, maybe it's expired, maybe you have a product you just like better that cleans your toilets better. So get rid of the other stuff. You can get rid of a bunch. When you're getting dressed in the morning, 
morning, grab a few t-shirts you haven't worn in the last six months or year. And guess what? Now that you have a donation bin nearby, you got a spot to put them. So you get the idea. There are numerous, and I mean hundreds of opportunities in our days to be able to let go of things. And every single item you get rid of adds up. So don't underestimate getting rid of a few things at a time, because before you know it, that donation bin you have is going to be full and you are going to be happily driving down the road to your favorite donation center. And your life is now so much simpler. And number six is get your daily dose of decluttering. So if clutter audits or have been challenging for you or those don't resonate, do this one. And it's so simple. All you have to do is declutter as many things as the date. So if it's March 15th, you get rid of 15 items. If it's March 16th, 16 items, March 20th, 20 items, the first one item. That's it. It's so simple. And once you get into the groove of this and it becomes a habit, you'll actually really look forward to doing it. And here's the thing. Sometimes people are like 16 things. I don't know. How am I ever going to get rid of 16 things? Or on the 31st of the month, gosh, that might feel like I don't even know if I have 31 things to get rid of. I promise you every single item counts. So you can get rid of one pencil, one pen, one marker, one eraser, all these little things that are sitting in your junk drawer that you haven't used in a long time. All of those things add up. And I promise you it's way easier to do this than you think it is. And it doesn't take very long either. So keeping your home clutter free is a thousand percent attainable. I promise you all it takes is some behavior changes, some habit changes, and boom, you're off to the races. Need more inspiration to continue on your decluttering journey? Click the video on your screen now.